Luke Scriberis and uh, nice. cut. <laughs> 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 and Elizabeth coming. Is that one right? <laughs> <laughs> In a funny way, this was sort of always uh, uh, Wedderburn comes to Hong Kong, wasn't it? Because I didn't realise until. Uh, you were both here in the studio that uh, Luke, you actually uh, spent quite a bit of time at uh, Wedderburn growing up, and that in yeah. fact Liz was your your mentor as in your teenage world. Yes, that's in mistaken. Wedderburn. In yes. Wedderburn, we used to go up on my roof to draw the bush. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Every all over the place, all and right. she taught me. We drew each other. We drew the things in the kitchen, whatever was on the dining table, left over from the day before the bush, and then yes, on the roof, and. Um, but yes, we were. We lived very close to each other, and um, I lived at John Peart's house for about three years, and my parents lived there, so we knew each other over those years. And um, then I went to art school. Elizabeth and John taught me, talked me into going to art school, which and you've cursed them ever since. No, <laughs> I shot like an arrow from a bow. You did. You did. <laughs> yes, you were ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Liz, you came up last year when we, of course, had uh, you and Peter up here. Yes. And, uh, in fact, we went out to um, Farm or Shan and uh, you did some sketches there, which Looked have now worked up into, uh, into bigger pieces. Into bigger painting. What is it about Hong Kong that's really catching you this, this trip? Oh, well, last time, you can get in first impressions, you get um, very, uh, yes, very clear impressions, the first ones. So when I came back, I, one thing was that uh, roof, you know, the roofs from mm. your office window, which just looked like a big jumble, Over but here. in fact that, that, that interested me, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. And then uh, the Woolloomooloo, the night we went up to Woolloomooloo and looked down and saw the city, and I didn't have anything to draw that night, so that stayed in my mind too, and I wanted to come back and do that. Right. Those right. were two things. Apart from, yeah, just the general thing with the mountains, the water, the, the uh, the huge urban thing that is Hong Kong. What a challenge it is too. And it's been interesting watching both of you in the studio and that um, there's you, you will pick up a canvas and start making marks and, and, and building it up. Whereas Luke, I think you sort of came in a bit like a bull at the gate sort of, and uh, your mark making uh, Without, I guess, much uh, idea initially of, of, of what was ultimately, or what is ultimately going to end up resulting. Uh, so quite a different process, perhaps. Um, yeah, I, yes. Bull at the gate, bull in the china shop, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but I just made a very immediate response. You know, when you travel, basically, Elizabeth and I both travel and paint a lot. Not always together, but um, there's a tremendous urgency when you're working and traveling to respond and take it all in and, and study at great speed. This is the first time you've seen Hong Kong. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Is um, it living up to expectations? Oh, different? and some. How different? Yeah, no, it's <laughs> I've had a great time. Yeah. Uh, it's a totally enchanting place. Um, I'm just looking out the window now. Yeah, it's um, that sub now, isn't it? An incredible the blue skies and then the looming mountains which plunge down into that incredible kind of congested crucible form of high density level living is absolutely astonishingly beautiful and touching there's a very sort of touching kind of humanity in the place but at the same time it's all happening so hard and so fast that I find that I'm grappling to sometimes get the uh, the intimacy that I normally get in the landscape in the landscape so um, 
been a very, very interesting, very, very intense form of, of studying and painting at the same time. Normally I'm, I go out, when we, you know, we work on paper and whatever, in the desert or in Turkey or oh, wherever we happen to be, and you put together these small studies and works on paper and, and, and you, you take notes on the, on the particular sort of nuances and characteristics of every environment that you're in. And then slowly, slowly through the porous matter comes the, 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 the big paintings, paintings the capital A uh, paintings, capital P paintings, whatever. This, in this instance, it's all happening at once, like an incredible kind of tendrils are all running in different directions, and it's a very, very intense experience, but um, it's working. I mean, that really raises a very interesting uh, uh, additional question, and that is that uh, both of you really are, are landscape painters, Australian landscape painters, and yet you're up here in, in, in very much an urban environment. Mm -hmm. um, I notice already uh, there's some of your, some of the palette that I'm familiar with in terms of your Australian landscape mm -hmm. are changing. Well, the palette's totally influenced, and it's so different from what I usually paint. But the, uh, you know, the landscape or still life, I paint still life too. Well, you can treat this as a sort of still life. Big right. still life. <laughs> but what's been good, in a sense, and uh, difficult, is having this time limit to do a certain amount of work, and having to respond, right. and then get something done, and see what happens. Because I generally uh, brood and shape and you know, keep work coming back and coming back and it takes time. So this has been for me very odd to finish paintings quickly. It doesn't happen to me. Luke, with you, the subject matter again, very urban versus um, versus the the, the, uh, the Australian outback or the Gallipoli mm. group and Gallipoli together. Mm. Um, here, uh, it seems that some of the side street, some of the short the shop fronts. So, uh, I think I saw a duck or two in, in sneaking into uh, one or two of the works that you, you've already started. Um, mm. So again, it, it, am I right in, in saying that it's the urbanness that has really sort of struck you and, and created that immediacy? That yes, that and at the same time the kind of contrast of the incredible, vast, wild formations that are out beyond all the beyond all the sort of skyscrapers and high-rise living you see always a beautiful little wedge of a mountain looming in the distance when the atmosphere permits but when you're down in there the humanity that's patinaed into all of those little alleyways that we were walking through the other day um, is what I'm most of the series of works that I've undertaken in the last few years have basically almost always been about the human condition. The, the actual, um, the lives that have been lived in the places that I've visited, either past or present. Like the Aboriginal people in the desert or of Australia or the, the history in, the, in Gallipoli. In this instance, I just see the, the relentless humanity that's trampled into the, into the um, places that we visited here is the appeal to me and it's the it's the use and the grit and the layers and the scoured surfaces and the jumbling tumbling kind of stacked up architecture that's constantly being torn down and rebuilt and built on top of is is where eventually my work i think will end up so far i don't see although we are looking at human habitation and buildings and man-made structures, uh, so far I haven't seen a lot of people in either of your no, works. No, no, no. But one is aware that there's huge concentration of humanity. You know, just looking out. Up at your, on your terrace the other night, you're looking out and thinking, my God, how many, how many thousands upon thousands of people are, are in these spaces. You feel it in the street too. Absolutely. But there's a fantastic activity and um, buzz. There's a huge buzz. Buzz in Elizabeth's paintings that, to me, it would appear as though there were thousands of people scuttling around in those paintings. I don't, I don't think. But that's where one of the places where I sort of became conflicted, as, as I said before, that the intimacy that is lost to me in a in a in an environment where 
there are so many people that you can, can't move. I was in the meat market recently with a couple of others, and um, I, I just couldn't. I, I did. I, I just completely. I felt totally lost, and that's why I did these drawings here of figurative, figurative yeah. work. That um, which is yeah, which, which was actually um, done in a you know a portrait in its way of intimacy. They, they were, that's the reason I did them is because I um, I wanted to 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 turn the whole sort of experience upside down somehow and get some kind of um, intimate sort of composition into into something I was doing and that's what these are to me. So um, I, I found that and I'm going to move these onto other mediums with charcoals and inks and, and get some get some sort of sensuality I guess into the works but in the paintings themselves no I'm like Elizabeth in that sense that we just let the um yes the evidence, the evidence. But you heard, yes you heard there's a, some sort of energy in the paintings mm. that expresses that the light that the, the oh no definitely I'm looking, I'm looking at the one over here of one chain you can see the although, cars moving and so mm, yes although it's buildings, honking horns honking although horns. buildings it's it's uh, people it's and, yeah there's a lot of stuff happening and Luke, for you, how has Hong Kong lived up to expectations or not? Oh, I'm, it's just been a dream. Yeah. I mean, well, you, I, I mean uh, you, spent, you spent some time in a very remote part of, of, of northern China, about yes. nine hours drive out of Beijing last year. Yeah. Um, would one be fair in saying <laughs> this is a, a, a quite, a, quite a contrast then? A to, total uh, contrast, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I've, it's just been a fantastic opportunity to sort of live and stay and work all at once and we always knock around and have fun and help each other out and critique each other well that's been good of course to have share the studio with absolutely with you two that's been very good yeah yeah so uh, no it's been it's been fantastic and i'm well we already have got a lot of work done out of the trip which is yes i'm surprised that incredible that, yes i'm surprised myself that i i thought i'd be much slower yeah. I mean, that but the energy is infectious. The energy, yeah. yeah. And maybe it's the energy of the place. Yes, too. that's what I mean. The energy of the place has been so much pressing in on us. Mm. Yes. Mm. Are you filming it? When you think about it long, last time you called him on the phone, you could promise one good thing, but he'd write out wrong. What you considered said the